What's going on guys, welcome back to season 8 of Atlanta Thrashers franchise mode series. As you can see, last season we were actually a first round exit. Tampa Bay there won the Stanley Cup, and it sucked because we had probably the best team we've had yet. Also, a couple Thrashers legends, both Blake Wheeler and Dustin Bufflin retired after last season. So, I think the only alumni we have left is Evander Kane. Hopefully, though, this is the year to win the Cup. So, Voile there is now a 90, but he needs a new contract. So, uh, we'll be in tough again, I think, in terms of the cap. But, the good news is... Ovechkin there, also retired, so 3.7 million is saved. Retired as a Thrasher, has a new goal record past Gretzky. And Kane's $7 million deal is now up, so maybe that $7 million deal the Sharks gave him, it was like a curse for us, I don't know. Also, too, for goaltending, we have a lot of options. So Lekin in there is still an 87, Knight's up to 86, and he signed a 2.5 million, which is super cheap. He'll probably be 87 by the start of the season, so we can trade Lekin in for whatever we want. And then better than that, Wallstead in the AHL is an 87 now. But he needs a new deal, so hopefully we can get him relatively cheap on a short one or two year deal because he actually has no NHL numbers, 87, but he's playing the AHL. Very curious to see what he's going to ask for. So before we get to that, guys, we'll start the draft here. We actually have a decent amount of picks, I think. Hopefully none of these players end up mattering for us winning the cup. I'd like to win it, you know, in the next couple years here. So we'll start with the draft. Obviously, always looking for diamonds in the rough, late round steals, help for trade value, or sorry, help for just making trades, mainly goalies, stuff like that. So... I'm not really sure where our first uh, pick is, and it is in the first round, pick 24. Curious to see at uh, the top of this draft what it's looking like. 80 overall medium length, that's really good. A few 78s there, 75. So, not the greatest, like only 5 medium leads so far. Usually there's a bit more than that. I think I remember now actually that this was a bit of a weaker draft. So, we'll just take a pick here with our first. Hope for the best. Lie on there. Medium top 4. We'll just sort here by potential. This gem here. 50-50 low franchise. We'll definitely have to grab him with a later pick. This goalie's 50-50 medium lead, but he's ranked 90. So, I don't even know if... There's none of these guys, actually, that have 50-50 medium lead on. Or, I guess, this dude here, he's ranked around 25. High elite. He should be at least medium top 6. Take a chance on him. Hope for the best. He's high top 9. Our scouts were definitely off on that one. Our next pick here, guys, is pick number 20 in the second round. Honestly, I'm probably just going to reach on one of those guys that should be high potential just because after this thing, we have like a fourth and a fifth. So I'll probably take 93 here. A little early, like a round early, but good chances the medium league goalie is a gem. And he is, so that's awesome. Yeah, I cannot be upset. Late second rounder getting that. I think we actually have another second round pick, pick 25. Now with this one, we don't really have to go for that low franchise dude as what's he gain? He's ranked 240, so 200 picks early. That's a bit early. This guy, though, 50-50 medium elite, rank 90. That wouldn't be too bad of a pick. I think we're going to go for it here. Medium top nine. All right, so we've had a couple. I wouldn't say bust, but definitely, you know, not what we were hoping for. Now, pick round four here. We'll probably take the front. Ooh, could take a guaranteed starter goalie. Uh, we'll do that, and then we'll go with that low franchise guy last. 54 overall is not great, but guaranteed starter. Um, that's good potential. So, actually, round six here. I thought we had a fifth round pick. Kind of a little close. Hopefully our guy's still there, though. And he is. Jenks, Jem, low franchise. I mean, at least I'm guessing he'll be low elite. And yeah, he's low elite, 50 overall, which isn't amazing, but for the end of the sixth round, it's pretty solid. So now through sign phase here, guys, with 12.2 million in cap space. Like I was mentioning, Savoie's now at 90, needs a new deal. Hopefully it's relatively cheap, his first deal. Never mind, it's 10.6 million. One year, though, 6 million. That's such a big savings. And then McDavid needs a new contract next year. Tons of these guys, actually. Tolvanen, Dubois, Lindholm. So maybe the one-year deal would be worth it, can save a bit after that. I know uh, Kane, he doesn't want to come back. We're going to force him to come back. What's he want? One point, yeah. So what if we give him one year, two, okay, let's just do two years. Then he's 33. We want to keep him forever anyways. Actually, in that case, yeah, let's do an um, eight-year deal because we want to keep him forever. 1.75 because he's going to be our, on our team no matter what. So big savings on his old contract. Uh, Lebedev here is a 79 now, medium elite. I think we have to get him signed. Like, good chance he could be pushing for an NHL job. I actually want to see, does he have a chance to be our sixth defenseman? So three, four, five. Oh yeah, right now we have three 79s there. So hopefully he can grow. Same with McIsaac. We've been waiting on him for a while. I'd like to at least get an 80. Robertson there, low elite. He could also make the jump. So we have a solid top four. And then we'll have three guys there kind of competing for the last two spots. Not a bad spot to be. Goalies. So Lekkinen, he's going to be out because Wallstead's four years younger. Franchise potential. I'm curious though, how's he going to work here? He hasn't played an NHL game, but he is 87 overall. 6.2. 6.2 6 
See, in real life, it's like, he's really... I mean, he probably wouldn't be this high rated only playing in the AHL. Um, it's kind of tough to like, kind of gauge this. On the open market, though, he gets a really good deal. Uh, what are we going to do here? I don't even know. Lekkanen, we're going to qualify because we don't want to lose him. Knight, I guess, would be the best backup in the league behind Wallstedt. Kumis, oh, we got to sign this guy. Medium league goalie. Cannot let him go. Usually, you can give like 50k less on all the rookies. Just save a little bit. So, Knights, Wallstedt, I don't really know what to do there. Because Savoie, or actually, how much was Savoie's one-year deal? We might actually be able to make this happen. We have 12 million. One year, six. We gave Kane just under two, so we'll call that eight. We still have four million, so it's going to be really close. But I think we can fit all these guys in. Really won't have a lot of money to sign anyone in free agency, unfortunately. But that's kind of been the case for a while now, just because we have such a stacked team. It's a miracle we don't lose any players. So hopefully Savoy takes that one-year deal. And then we might have to do another one-year deal here with Wallstead, just to kind of keep our team as good as we can. 4.8, I mean, one year, 4.5. It's kind of like Jordan Bennington, except he didn't win us the Stanley Cup, so we'll see what they all say. All right, guys, so Vander Kane did accept our long-term deal. That's awesome. Got him a bit cheaper, and like I was saying, we're going to keep him forever anyways, so glad he accepted. I also made offers on all like the AHL guys, so we'll see if they... Oh, wow, Walsh accepted that. I didn't think he would. That's great. So we have him and Dice, our two goalies. Both should grow over the summer. Like We could honestly have, I don't know, like an 89 and an 88 as our two goalies, and they'd be making a combined $6 million, so that's insane. So Walsh accepted as well. That's great. So we got the three big guys, Kane, Wallstedt, and Savoie, and everyone else thinks an AHL deal. So we probably have zero cap space, but we were able to keep our entire team, which is awesome. I think last year we just got unlucky. I think if we hold this team together, we should be okay. We actually had three million in cap space. Wow, so I cannot do math. That's awesome. We could maybe make a small move, do something. We're in a good position. I mean, we have Lekin in to trade as well, so probably bring in a defenseman. I think our forward group, like defense, we have those two, three sunny nines. If they grow, like we'll be okay. Forwards, I mean, we're pretty stacked. I'm trying to think. Pretty much have all 80s on forward, aside from Markov Peterson, who also should grow. So at this point, we really can't make the team too much better. It's just about getting lucky in the playoffs, I think. So we're not the free agency period here, guys. Obviously, like I was mentioning before, only have $3 million. But wow, Matthews is available. Line A, McCarr, McAvoy, it's a big summer. Capra's off there. Nolan Patrick. This might be the biggest free agent class yet, to be honest. You get six guys there, all 89 plus. Cal Connor, William Carlson, Fabry Benson. That's nuts. I'm um, curious to see goalies available here. Top one. Jerry in 89 now. That's nuts. His overall, I mean, he's an elite goalie. That's pretty crazy. Lekin, of course, the second best. Gonna try and trade him. Comrie, Sorokin. Then you got a few 83s there, some 82s. So, yeah, this free agent class is pretty nuts. $3 million, obviously we cannot afford to sign any of these guys. But, I mean, we don't really need to. Lekkanen will probably try and trade for like a good young player on a cheap deal. I am curious though to see if there's any good players here on two-way deals with high potential. So, 1961 low elite is pretty good. 2065 low top six, same thing. 1956 there, so we'll try and we only have five spots. Try and sign the best ones. Maybe goalies. They'd have to have like at least a low elite for us to sign them. Oh, wow. There's a medium elite goalie. How does this guy sl slip through the cracks? Four teams interested. I could definitely see him saying no to sign with us just because we have so many other medium elite goalies. The starter, I'm not even going to bother trying to sign just because I don't have the spots to do it. So we'll try and sign the two low elite players there. And then I guess the two best low top six. Maybe if there's a high. Ooh, 20, 65, 20 and 70 low top four. That is super good. So we'll try and sign him. And then I think we'll try and sign a few of the forwards there. Honestly, looking through here, it's pretty crazy. Like, the players' teams don't sign. So this guy, Punev's 2065 low top six. It's honestly a solid prospect. We'll give him the max there, 950. Hopefully all those guys sign. And then, of course, we'll try and trade Lekin in. All right, guys. So right now I'm trying to make a blockbuster with the Chicago Blackhawks. It is kind of insane, all the moving parts here. So we're trying to get back Adam Bockfist, 24-year-old, a overall. Right-hand defenseman, medium potential, obviously 8th overall there, 2018. Luke Hughes, I feel like he could be good on the bottom pair. He's got insane hands. His defensive stats aren't that great, but really good stater. And I feel like the medium elite guy we have is a 79, will for sure grow. The other two I'm not sure about. Hughes is already an 80. Uh, Drummond here, we kind of need, I'd like a little bit of an upgrade on our fourth line. 82 overall, third line checker, low elite potential. And he's got awesome physical stats there, 91 aggressiveness, 92 body check, 94 strength. Pretty good hands, powerful shot. 
He's also got 87 shot block, 91 stick checks. Kind of the perfect fourth liner for us. Now, we have to take back a goalie, and their lowest value one is this Langlo guy who's got starting potential, so that kind of sucks. I wish they had someone, like, a goalie that just didn't have any value because we're basically trading for a guy we do not need, but we have to do it to make it go through. Kincad has less value, but he's got that salary there. Honestly, let's see if this would go through. We might have the cap. We do have the cap space. We'll try that. Uh, he'd basically be our AHL starter at that point, so it's whatever. Um, Radin, let's see. Severson, he's basically... Bacchus is the upgrade for him. He's there for the salary cap purpose. Lekkinen, we don't need. We have two awesome goalies. Kiskinen's a very solid forward prospect. 19, 74, medium elite, but we need someone there with some potential. Same with Projanovic, medium elite goalie. So, like, Chicago's getting a lot here. They're a hopeful team. I feel like they're getting a lot of pieces. We'll see what they say. Trades accepted. Okay, I wasn't sure that was going to go through. I feel like a team from their spot, they just got way more pieces, and we upgraded everywhere we needed to, so that's awesome. And next year, I'm actually trying to flip Kincad to the Minnesota Wild for a second-round pick. They want him. He's actually not bad. I noticed, like, 82 overall backup goalie, making 1.79 is pretty reasonable. Rodrigue here is currently our AHL starter. I'd rather it be one of the younger guys. Then Peterson, unsigned, 78, 25 years old. I'm just willing to move on. Same with Gallant here, 26, 77. They got extra roster spots. I want to make sure all those guys we made offers on, we have spots to sign them. I feel like this honestly does go through. And yeah, it does. So there we go. Just gave us a bit more flexibility of the contract spots. Made sure we're not wasting money on an AHL goalie and King Cad. So that is awesome. I feel like this team, we're set up pretty nicely. Like we should be good to go. Hopefully we're in a spot where you can just make like a blockbuster deal at the deadline. We'll see if those kind of young two-way players of potential are going to sign with us or not. Hopkins rejects the elite goalie, decided to go with Montreal. Better mix of players. I figured that because we have so many good young goalies. It was worth a shot, though. Uh, Punevs, though, accepts. I think he had low top six. Same with Sundstrom. He was low elite defenseman. Same with Renee. So that's awesome. We got those guys. Maligan, or we're not for Dryden, a second and a fifth. Um, Maligan would have to be, like, at least an 80 for me to even entertain it. At this point, assuming no growth, our worst forward on the team is a 79. He is an 81. Uh, he's got good hands. He's got good speed. Dryden, though, 21, 74, low top six, a second and a fifth. He's only making a million bucks, too. That's really not that bad of an offer, to be honest. Uh, Dryden, he's got low top six. He's pretty high rated, though, already. Um, second and a fifth. I wonder if there's some guy that's not quite as high rated, but similar value to Dryden. So clearly they want a forward. A second and a fifth, obviously, aren't a big deal at all. Punez here has pretty much the exact same value, but he's... One year younger and nine overall less, so I'd much rather trade him. And then instead of the our second round pick, I'd rather give up the Minnesota one we just traded, just in case you want to do like an offer sheet or something. Actually, Minnesota one has a lot more value, so screw the offer sheet. Let's just give them ours, see what they say to this. Trades accepted. So our team is pretty nasty. We have a pretty much no hole, I think. Still have $2 million in cap space, which I'd like to keep just for flexibility. You can see there, Matthews, Lining, McCarr, all the big guys. McAvoy, still uh, waiting probably for more teams to be interested. We definitely, like, we could clear cap space to try and sign them, but it's just not worth it. We have a good enough team already. I'm curious, $2 million, what can it kind of get us? Nemestikov, it can almost get us Nemestikov, 32 years old, 83 overall. That's... $2 million for an 83, that seems just such good value. So yeah, guys, I'm not sure what's going on here. Like, right here, two defensemen, 81 overall, they want two and a half million. And then you got 43 overall forwards, all wanting a bit over two, and Kajula, Granlin, Nemestikov, and Coyle. So Coyle, I think, is the cheapest. Nemestikov, only 25k more. 32 years old, so he's a bit younger. He would be awesome. Three years. He does get cheaper at four years, so he's 36. I mean, we can still offer three years there, 2.4. I don't think he's got any other offers yet, so maybe we get him. That'd be pretty awesome. At that point, we just trade Melgan, who I know we just traded for, but um, it's not a big deal. McGillis there, semi overall team man, low top four. That was such a good signing. So I kind of feel bad, guys, since we just got Melgan, but gonna try and trade him here to Arizona for a second. Trey goes through. Again, like eight, a million bucks for him was pretty good for 81, but two million for 83 Nemestikov is a bit better. Just makes our fourth line, like I said, that much better. Plus two. Want to make sure we have the contract spot open. We can even offer Nemestikov a bit more if he doesn't say yes, but he does, so. Yeah, um, our team should be insane. And check this out, guys. Marka was just given an offer sheet by the New York Islanders. 1.225 million. Uh, kind of sucks because we cannot match it. 24 years old, 79 overall, low top six. I'm surprised someone actually came in and did that. 
His stats are really weird actually looking at them. 90 defensive awareness, but then 71 shot block and 77 stick check. Super, super weird. Decent hands, decent speed, okay shot. He actually, I don't think, was going to make this team anyway. would have been in the AHL, so I'll just... I'll just let the Islanders have them, I guess. Good job on them, seeing that we didn't have the cap space. We've taken advantage of a lot of teams before doing the same thing. So, uh, kind of sucks losing him, but it was the risk we kind of took just qualifying him. Washington wants to give us TVR here. We do not need him. Um, we have Luke Hughes on the bottom pair with ne Neveded, or how you say that guy's name. And now doing the captain to you here, guys. Obviously lost our captain last year in Wheeler, as well as one of the A's in Bufflin. So, Evander Kane there is the new C. He's the only remaining Thrasher alumni. McDavid wearing one of the A's along with Cole Perfetti. Decided to go all forwards there. I think Perfetti's one of the longest like standing players on this team. And of course, McDavid, how can you not wear a letter? And we're also showing the scene here, guys. Obviously, team stats there is champion. Like I was saying, this is probably the best team we've ever assembled. So first line, all 90 plus. You got Wallstrom, McDavid, Savoie. Wallstrom's a sniper. McDavid does everything. Best player in the world. And Savoie's all just hands. His shot still isn't that great. Actually, he's both 75, but... Hands there, everything else, pretty sick. Tolden in there, the sniper on the second line. You got Dubois in the middle, Perfetti on the left wing. Perfetti, all his hands there, 99, very fast, just sick player. Third line, you got Drummond, who's actually up to an 83, playing with Bellino and Foot. Foot, very good sniper in his own right, solid hands, like, this team's insane. Then fourth line, you got Vander Kane, who's actually dropped to an 81, which kind of sucks, but that's okay. Playing with Newhook and Nemestikov, so should be, like, one of the better fourth lines in the league. Looking at the defense here, Lindholm and Klingberg still are top pair. You got Bockfist and Byram on the second pair, very solid, I think. And then you got Lebedev and Luke Hughes there on the bottom pair. Hughes, insane hands, fast skaters. Defensive stats aren't the greatest, but he's playing with Lebedev, who is pretty solid defensively, so they should complement each other nicely. Goalies here, Wallstedt's up to an 89. Knights backing up there at 86, so we gotta have the best backup as well. And I was looking at one thing too. So Wallstedt, he's got 99 breakaway, 99 five hole, pretty ridiculous. As well, he's got 99 endurance, so he can play as much as we need him to. And kind of weird though, Spencer Knight, his endurance is 83, so definitely not the greatest. Kind of actually fits, he's a backup goalie. But there's stats like when you look at them, Wallstedt's not very good puck control, his passing, his, uh, his poke check, puck play frequency are all pretty low. Knights is a bit better, but still, between the two of them, we should be okay. First power unit there, Walsh, McDavid, Savoie, Tolvin, and Klingberg. Seconds, Perfetti, Dubois, Foot, Bockvis, Valino. It's pretty ridiculous. Four man there, all of our best players. Decided to throw Ford on D just because they're too good not to. Penalty kill, three man penalty kill. Like, just throughout, this team's absolutely stacked. AHL team, this Dryden guy, I'm pretty sure someone was trying to trade for him. So glad I didn't. 75 overall, but look at his shot. Four and a half star shooting there. It's almost all 90s, so I can see this guy getting like the AHL scoring lead, especially playing with Pietro here. Very good hands for an AHL player. And this prick roll dude, also all 90 hands. So they're just going to be feeding Dryden the puck there. The rest of the AHL team is pretty solid. Defense, you got Robertson, who's an 80. He was the guy that was originally going to be in the NHL for us, but traded for Luke Hughes. McIsaac, still a 79. He kind of busted for us, unfortunately, but we got him for free, taking over the Red Wings, so that's all right. Albalin here, uh, starting goalie potential, 75 overall. He was actually like a 63 or something, maybe a 67 at the end of last season. So he grew quite a bit. And then Kumeski backing him up is actually a medium elite. So hopefully uh, they play well. Again, very, very excited to see how this team does. Also, want to take a look at the ratings here. So yeah, look at that, guys. 100 offense, 93 defense. Surprise defense isn't even a bit higher than that. But we do have a ton of players elite potential, so it could definitely go up. And then 95 goaltending, which also is probably going to go up. Team's in a good spot. So we'll start the sim here. Cup or bust, come on. All right, guys, we actually just went undefeated in the preseason, 7-0. Usually, that's more of a curse than anything else, so let's see what happens. I wish going off here, guys, that could be good. Noah Juleson for Janes and a second-round pick. Uh, Janes, though, I'm trying to remember which player this is. So he's not that great. He does have low top 6, 72. Juleson, 82 overall. So he's also right-handed. He'd be an upgrade on Luke Hughes on that bottom pair. See whether or not uh, Hughes has gone up in rating though. Uh, let's see. So Hughes in 81. Levitt has now an 83. So it's kind of a lot to pay there for a one overall upgrade. I'm saying we'll just leave the team as is. So I sent right to the deadline, guys. We've been playing some pretty good hockey. 38, 18, and 7 record. AHL team there, 32, 18, and 5. So we should be pretty comfortably in a playoff spot. And yeah, first in the division there, 83 points, 11 point lead there on the Rangers. Savoie, 64 and 63 right now, mostly assists, which makes sense. So we've done a lot of cap space, 
like I was saying, the team is pretty stacked. You saw Lebedev is now an 83. I'm not sure has been any forward gro growth. Uh, looking at it here, looks to be the same. I mean, I don't know. Like, <laughs> the team, if there's like a superstar player on the block, then maybe we can make a trade for them. Otherwise, really not a lot we can do. So like I was saying, guys, only going to make a trade if it's for a superstar. And the Devils have Nico Hischer on the block. 27 years old, 91 overall. He would be an insane second line center for us. Now his deal is about to expire, so there's some risk here, but I feel like it's worth it. We want to try and finally win that cup. Adding a second round pick here, which actually evens out the value. Trading away Joe Valino, so he's going to get a raise anyways. And getting his year would actually drop Dubois to the third line center spot. Also adding Bowen Byram here. He's a second pairing defenseman for us. Only has 8 points in 63 games. And one thing that's kind of weird about Byram's stats, he's got 70 endurance, which I think might affect how he plays. But I'm actually going to replace him after this trade. So... The value is pretty equal. Worst case, we'll take off the second rounder. So we'll see what the Devils say here. Trades rejected. We don't need the second round pick. And there we go. We're calling up Robertson, who's an 80. So we're good for now. But like I was saying, guys, I'm not done yet. So I actually saw Columbus has Ryan Murray on the block. He's an 88 overall defenseman. So he's too higher than Byram. He'd be insane. 5.95 for the next five years is actually pretty solid as well. So... Ryan Murray, I'm thinking we'll have to give away one of our top prospects. Obviously, Lebedev there, we're not going to trade away. To try and get Murray here, I'm going to offer up Whitaker, 19-year-old, 66 overall, medium elite potential, forward prospect. Also going to try adding a first round pick next year's draft. This year, we still have two seconds, three thirds, like, we're pretty good. So hopefully that's enough. It looks to be pretty close, honestly. Maybe even, that might even be a little bit too much. So instead of a first rounder next year, let's try... Columbus, they can have their second rounder back, and we'll give them the Florida third this year. So second and third, that looks pretty equal. Let's see what the Columbus Blue Jackets say. Trade's going through. We'd have to move down to Vander Kane, though, so that's not good. Let's see. They're probably going to say no, but we'll try at, uh, making them retain, like, 500k. Yeah, they're not willing to retain 500k. All right, guys, so to avoid putting Kane on waivers, I'm going to add Robertson here, who's honestly a really solid defenseman. 22 years old, 80 overall, low elite, like... I do not want to trade him. Mean, his speed's not great, but the whole point, we need to get Kane a cup. So if I had Robertson, we're keeping our picks for sure. We'll see what Columbus says to that. And trades rejected. Robertson, 22-80, low elite. Like, that's he's such a good player. Uh, so we'll give them the Florida third. We're definitely, he's at least worth a second round pick. And they do say yes to that. So <laughs> our, our team just keeps getting better and better. And I'm trying to make one last trade here, guys, for another superstar. Florida has Hubert Doe on the block. 6.9 million for the next five years. 88 overall, obviously very, very solid player. Now, I do have them retaining a million dollars, so this goes through. Offering up Matthew Foote, who's a good player. He's younger than Huberdeau, but not quite as good. Obviously, he's got the really good shot on him, though. Also, adding Kumeski here, medium elite goalie. He's our backup right now in the AHL. So, the value is quite a bit on our side. Huberdeau's on the block. Maybe they'll retain the million dollar salary. We'll see what they say. Trade accepted. So, this for sure at this point is the best team we've ever had. We gotta win the Stanley Cup. And after that trade, guys, look at the trade values on this team. Like, the last one on the first page is Lebedev, who most teams would be, like, near the top. We still have Tolvin behind him. Hubert Doe's lying on the page. DiPietro, Hughes, Bockfist. Like, and then it's a big drop-off after that, but insane. So after those three blockbuster trade guys, here's an update look at the team. Wallstrom, McDavid, and Savoie still the first line. We got Tolvin, Tishier, and Perfetti on the second. Hubert Doe, Dubois, and Drummond on the third, like... Two 88s on the third line is ridiculous. Kane, Newhook, Nemistikov there is still the fourth line. Defense, our top four is insane now. Lindholm, Klingberg, Bockfist, and Murray. Lebedev and Hughes still on the bottom pair. Goalies have not changed. Look at the first power play unit here. Almost everyone's 90 plus, but Klingberg's 89. Even the second one there, the lowest rated guy is Bockfist, who's 87. So, like, this team just absolutely stacked throughout. There's no way anyone can match up with us. HL team also still looks pretty good. We got McIsaac leading the D. Even after we trade where a goalie, they just gave us a 61 to be the backup. And we still have our starter there. It's not too bad. So if this team can't win the Stanley Cup, I don't even know. Also, too, aside from his year, both Huberdeau and Murray actually still have, like, contracts. So that's kind of good, the fact that we actually are going to, like, not have to worry about re-signing a couple of guys. Curious what our ratings are now. Let's see. 100 offense, 94 D. So it's gone up by, what, I think only one, then 95 goaltending, I guess. We had 100 offense before, so it can't go much higher. This team, they got to get it done this year. So this is pretty insane, guys. The best team we've ever built, and we still can't get 50 wins. 48, 25, and 9 is the final record. 
They actually lost their first two games after we made, or sorry, first three games after we made all those trades. OT lost out of the Leafs. Hopefully this team is more of a playoff team because all three guys we got, Hishier, Huberdeau, and Murray have like better poise than the players we traded away. And I know poise is a big thing for the playoffs. AHL team 46, 21, and 5, so they're killing it too. And we did win the division, 105 points. We didn't win the conference though. Looks like Buffalo, 113. Matthew Savoie finished with 85 points, 82 games. Of course, this is a contract year for him too because we got him cheap there. One year deal for like 5 million. He's actually gone up by Sada, 91. Hishier finished with 84. McDavid at 80. Wallstrom, 78. Huberdeau, 68. Tolvin there, 65. Klingberg, 57 is really good. Same with Bockfist, 53. Dubois. Perfetti, a bit of a down year, 44 points. I'd like to see better from him. Drummond, 35, is not too bad. The rest of the guys, I mean, for fourth liners, like, they're not doing too bad. Wallstedt here, first year as a starting goalie. Pretty solid stats, 0.917 and a 2.71. Knights are actually even better, though, 0.933 and a 2.24. I assume he just got the matchups. I don't know, because, like, again, looking at their stats, just his puck control is a bit better, but, like, you'd think, I don't think passing or puck play frequency would really affect how well you play goalie. And I know Wallstedt's got the higher speed and like 99 breakaway, 995 hole. The dude, he should really be stopping more pucks. So I'll take a look here at who was the lead leader. Actually, before we do that, AHL points. Deep yet short 81. So a good chance he leads the entire AHL. Dryden 39 goals. So actually, uh, we'll check that and then we'll check the NHL here because I think those are both really good stats. That's the Western Conference. Entire league and Irwin here, 82. But I think there is a few uh, AHL games left. So Di Pietro, he's got a chance. He's right in the mix. And then for goals, wow, there's some guy there with 48. Dryden, 39, not quite. So NHL now. Let's see. P this Pearson guy, 95 overall. First overall, 2022. He had 60 goals, 111 points. Well, that's nuts. Points, let's see here. Eichel then 101. Iguchi, 95. 86 overall, he's got 99 for all his hands. His shot, I'm surprised how good his like uh, so power got, sorry. His accuracy is already pretty decent, but I always have his power really low. His physical stats, you can see there, are still very, very uh, low, but wow, this guy is a pure playmaker, 95 points. Matthews is also playing with him, he's a scorer, so they signed Matthews. Forsberg, Marchand, still 91 points, that's 37 years old, 84 overall, that's impressive. Duran there, Besser, Mysak, that's a different guy. So, yeah, actually, yeah, our guys, I think it's because we have too many. Shane right there on the blues. Wow, he's up to a 94. He also had franchise potential, just like Savoie. Shot there is a bit better, more powerful, and slightly more accurate. I'm not sure why both their shot accuracies didn't really grow much. Might have to boost those for next time from what they start out at. So, also check the standings here. Just kind of curious to see where he finished the entire league. I mean, 105 points. Can't be upset with that season. Entire league. We finished fourth. Edmonton and Minnesota were the other two teams ahead of us. Again, it's all about the playoffs, so we made it to the playoffs. I don't care for the wild card team. We just got to win this cup. Last in the league, Florida Panthers there, 68 points. Of course, we took Huberdo from them. Columbus, we took, uh, New Jersey, we took Hishir from. Columbus, we took Murray from. So all those teams going into rebuilds. We get started with the playoffs here. See we play. Hopefully, we at least win one round. <laughs> Last year, I can't believe. Uh, first round exit. Like, this team is so, like, they're too good to not win a playoff round. Who do we play in the first round here? The Ottawa Sanders. I swear, if we lose to the Ottawa Sanders, boys, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose it. I, I swear, I'm gonna lose it. So let's see, Ottawa Sanders. What's their team look like? Kachuk, Anderson, Abramov. So their first line's worse than our third line, and then all the lines after that. They have depth. Like actually, all their forward lines are 80 plus. So that's impressive. But their first line's worse than our third line. They got Shabbat and Nielsen. are both solid. So they actually have some D depth too. Goalies, they got Shesh York, who's a 91. This is actually a pretty good team. Wow. So, I mean, our team definitely has more depth. It looks like a lot of teams, they get 80-plus everywhere, and then they kind of run a solid first line, solid top D pair. They have an awesome goalie. I don't know how we're playing them. We finished first in the division, but whatever. Um, here we go. Hope for the best. First two games. Come on. 4-3 OT win. It's going to be a close series, isn't it? 5 nothing win. Let's go. So we won the first two. Puts us in a decent spot. Come on, boys. Hold on here. In Ottawa. Lose an OT. Lose 4 nothing. Are you kidding me? And you know what, guys? I think I'm just going to send the next three games straight here. Hopefully, we can get two wins. I swear. Back home for game five. AHL team, obviously, is in the playoffs there. I didn't actually check their standings. 
Are you kidding me? There we go. Come on, game seven. There we go. Oh my god, we lost three games straight, 7-2 win, huge game six in Ottawa, then the seventh game there we win. I was going to freak out, and next round here we play the New York Rangers. Not actually sure what their team is looking like. Actually, you know what? They have a lot of good defensemen, so voila, 13 points going off. I remember I was thinking about trying to trade for one of their D-men. I think they had something like, it was like, I swear it was like 10 80 plus defensemen, which is just ridiculous. Like, trade some of those guys away, use that money elsewhere. I feel like we at least are smarter than the computer with cap management. Bobby Brink, Lundell, Pashnak's on the Rangers now, 93. Krasov's a 91. I don't know why you wouldn't put Krasov on the first line of Pashnak. That's a bit strange to me, but okay. So they got two 90-plus wingers. JVR's an 81 on the second line, and they also have all 80-plus for the forward group. So yeah, their teams, they get good that way. Um, Lazarev's a guy who I want to trade for. Playing with Shea there, Fox, Cheka, Vukojevic, Lindgren. So... They got good defensive depth as well. I think our top four is better. Their bomb pair is actually better than ours. Offense, they do have a couple, or a few sick players, but I mean, our, we have an 88 on the third line. Our, our offense is clearly better. Goaltending, Comrie 86, Georgia 85, so we definitely have a bit of an edge there, but still, not a bad team at all. I think all these teams are pretty good. Even though like ours is insane, it kind of just shows you with player growth and everything. Most of these teams, unless they're rebuilding, they're going to be pretty good. So it's going to be tough, but... I like our chances. We play the first two games at home. Hopefully can go 2-0 again to start. Here we go. 5-2 win. 6-5 win. All right, there we go. The boys are scoring, so that's good. Next two games in Madison Square. Here we go. Please. Come on. There we go. Take one in New York. 5-4 OT win there in the fourth game. I'm going to leave that seventh game because I'm a little worried. Come on. There we go. 7-2 win. Game number five. Didn't even have to go to game six or game seven. Moving on to the conference final. Who do we got? We got the Philadelphia Flyers, which is always tough because they have Carter Hart in that and he's just an absolute god in this game. And look at this here, guys. Savoie's up to 21 points now in 12 games. The kid is going off. He wants to get paid. He was our elite, or what, he lead, I think he led the team in points regular season. Now in the playoffs, he's putting up like two points a game. So he's crushing it. He saw Wright, you know, higher raid than him. Uh, so I don't know why I went to the Rangers. They're playing the Philadelphia Flyers now. Let's see. Landis Gallick, it's Shurye, Voracek. Okay, so forward group. They have a lot of depth as well, like every single team so far, every forward in their NHL team has been 80+, plus, but they have two guys 88, after the, or Vortex 87, after that it's all 85 and under. Like, our third line is a is pretty much exactly equal to their first, two 88s, they have an 87, we have an 83. The other three lines, like, come on now, like, it's not even close, so our top two lines would really just destroy them. Defense, okay, they have just as good, even not better, top uh, four. It's actually really similar. 91 and 90, 87, 88, 82, 81, and then goaltending, Hearts and 93. So defense, I'd say, is a wash. They have the better goaltender. Forwards, we definitely have better forwards. So if our forwards can find a way to score on Hart here, we'll be okay. Or if Savoie goes off, Wall Sandals in his head. I think we have the home ice advantage still as well. So actually, yeah, that means Philadelphia, they took out Buffalo. So good for them. So for the conference final, I'm thinking we'll sim game by game here. We're eight and four through two rounds. They're eight and five. Here we go. I just noticed our HL team got uh, first round exited. That sucks. First period. There we go. Perfetti. Huge second period. Kane, Lindholm, Perfetti again. Third period, two goals each side, but we come away there. Six three win. I think they actually outshot us there. It looked like forty to thirty five, but boys got it done. So huge win there. Game number one. I'm nervous. <laughs> yeah, like every single game, I'm nervous because I'm seeing how good these teams are playing. No team's going to be like a walk in the park or anything. So game two here. We'd love to take two at home. And look at that. Hishir, Huberdeau, Savoie, Newhook. 4-1 lead after one. Are you kidding me? We only have a one goal lead now. There we go though. Third period, Savoie and Huberdeau. We hold on there. Big 6-3 win. The boys can score, that's for sure. Like they have a 93 overall goalie in heart. But when you're getting peppered, every single line that comes over the boards is taking high quality shots on you. You know, it's going to be tough for him to stop. So two games in Philly now. Let's see if we can get it done here. Obviously, away games, I don't think it actually matters in terms of the sim, but, you know, in real life it does. They score the first there. Landis Gog, second period. We get two. McDavid, Savoie goes for them, so we're tied up 2-2. Two -two. Unfortunately, we lose that one by one. Timoshov, Nachushkin for them. McDavid scores. We actually outshot them there by, what was that, 11, and they only beat us by one. So, as long as we're firing shots on net, like our offense, it's going to be tough to compete with. Hopefully here we can at least take one game in Philly. 3-1 lead after 4 would be a very, very good spot for us to be in. Just have to win 
One in the next three. Come on, boys. Here we go. Nothing after the first. They get one after the second. We just need one goal here. Come on, tie it up. Force OT. That sucks. So, lose one nothing. I think that's the first game of these playoffs we've actually been shut out. Carter Hart, of course, would be the one to do it. 93 overall. Like, his rating's so high based on his age with elite potential. He just, he grows insane in this. So, game five, we're heading back home. Hopefully, we can pick up a win here. First period. There we go. 2-1 lead. His sheer new hook for us. Landis Cog for them. Another one there in the second from Wallstrom. Hold on, boys. And there we go. They got one in the uh, third from Schwartz, but we did hold on. So we just have to win one of the next two games, and we're moving on to the Stanley Cup final. Please, come on. We made, like, the three trades we made at the deadline, one of those trades would be crazy for a team. The fact we made three, like, come on now. Here we go. Game six in Philly. Let's get one win in Philly. 1-1. One, one, Couturier, new hook. Nachushkin, Wallstrom. 2-2 two, two, going to our third period here. And there we go, two goals, Perfetti, Wallstrom, we pull away there, heading to the Stanley Cup Final, let's go. So our Stanley Cup Final matchup, guys, is not against the Anaheim Ducks, it's actually a bit more perfect than that. We're playing the other expansion team here, the Vegas Golden Knights. I don't believe they've won a Stanley Cup yet in this sim, so both of us here looking for our first Stanley Cup championship. They got Glass and Stone, 290 overall players. After that, really not a lot on offense. They are all 80 plus though, so I guess that's easier to do than I thought. Definitely, like, our forwards are better. Defense, they got McAvoy, so they signed him. Our top four is still better, though, looking at it. Bottom pair is also better. Goaltending, Jack Campbell, 88, 34 years old, so good for him. He must have had a really good season, jumped up in rating. So I'm hoping for the best here. I think we have a good shot. I don't want to, like, jinx it, but honestly, this might be, like, our best matchup yet. I think all the other teams we played so far in the East were better than Vegas, and we do have the home ice advantage there. So the three teams that did better than us in the regular season were all knocked out by other teams, which is pretty cool. We'll see here what the kind of stats look like with the matchup. So we have five better offense, one better defense, and two better goaltending. I'm hoping this is our year. We can't really build a much better of a team than this with the salary cap on. So first game at home. Hopefully can win that first one. I feel like the first one's always crucial. Here we go. First period. And two goals for us, both from, uh, from Tolvin in there. I think the Vegas color there looked pretty similar. Yeah, we, Look at that, yeah. Tolvin in again, so wait, does he just have, does he have a hat trick in two periods? Yeah, he does, okay, so Tolvin's got a hat trick. Uh, Stone, Glass, and then Kyle there, all score for them, so it's tied up 3-3. Tolvin, like, boys gotta give him some help here. Third period. We're going to OT. Tolvin, what the hell? He's got four goals in the first game. That's insane, okay. Might as well make it five, be the OT hero. Ryan Murray, I'll take it as long as we win, but Tolvin in four goals, dude just went off. Okay, I think his deal is actually up too. At, at, at this point, we're signing him because you can't, four goals in the first game, the Stanley Cup final, you get signed. Like, you don't let that guy go. So second game here, that first one was very, very close. Hopefully, can pull it out. Nothing in the first. Second period, we get Savoie. He's been a hero all playoffs. I forgot to show you guys. I think he's got like, I forgot. I'll show you after this game. And we actually pull off with that one. Kane, the Thrash alumni, glass for them. So 2-1 win there. Leading the playoffs, Stanley Cup final. 2-0, that's awesome. Uh, like I was saying, I wanted to show you guys. I think I forgot. You probably might have seen it, but I wanted to just show it to you guys. Savoie, 30 points right now in 20 games. He's been, he's been like I said, he's been a hero. He's crushing it. He needs a new deal as well, so he's going to get paid. If he wins us the Stanley Cup, he will for sure get paid. So third game now is in Vegas. Usually, you know, Vegas tough away game for sure playing there can't get uh, too ahead of ourselves game three first period and they get all three that sucks so we're down three nothing second period not bad we get two there Hubro and Kane down two there's a chance we could come back here in the third and they get three more that's not good they had 50 shots that game beat us seven to three or seven to two there so I'm not sure what the boys were doing partying a little bit too hard there game three hopefully can bounce back here game number four Obviously, like, we won those first two. If we lose the next two, we, like, it was all for nothing. We lost our lead. Come on now. Game four, first period. And we're actually up 2-1. McDavid, both goals. Go for the Hattie, kid. Uh, Wallstrom there in the second, 3-1 lead. And in the third, Perfetti and Drummond. Huge, huge game. 5-1 win. 3-1 series lead. We just have to win one of the next three. And Atlanta Thrashers are finally Stanley Cup champions. Come on. So, game five is actually in Atlanta. Would be pretty awesome to win it here. Let's see what happens. Here we go. 
first period. And we're down to not a good look. Second period. And okay, yeah, that's all of them again. Again, the color's kind of similar. So 5-1. Yeah, I, I knew we weren't going to come back from that. So not where we wanted to be game six, but or sorry, game five, but maybe game six. I was hoping we could have won it at home, but winning in Vegas would be pretty cool as well. That'd be that'd be a party for sure. So here you go. Game number six. Hopefully team can come alive here. They bounced back last time we had a big loss. First period. Down by one. Perlini for them. Second period. 2-2. Two, two, let's go. New hook McDavid for us. Bjork for them. So let's just resume the sim. Put it on eight times. We're actually getting, wow, 32 shots to 14. The boys got to start shooting. Bjork scores there. I think that was shorthanded. Dubois answers back immediately though. Team's waking up. Come on, give Wallstead some help. Another power play. McDavid, let's go. Let's go. 4-3. About 10 minutes left here. Kill this off. Kill this off, we do. 7.5. Come on. We're actually shooting quite a bit here. We're getting alive. Come on. Dubois again. 5-3. They're going to pull the goalie soon. 30 seconds left. I think the Thrashers are finally Stanley Cup champions. So here we go, guys. we got about 30 seconds left in this game. Vegas pulling the goalie. It's kind of cool to watch the team we built playing here. The first entire starting lineup, we got Lindholm and Klingberg on D, Wallstrom, McDavid, Perf or Swa. I almost said Perfetti. I keep forgetting the lines um, on forward. It's kind of interesting, too. There's no offsides, so they're just kind of skating right by, making, like, weird plays. Two-goal lead, seven seconds left. Come on, boys. Big save from Wallstedt. Of course, he's going to cover it up there, make us wait five more seconds. Hey, sure to take the draw. I'm, th I'm sure him, Murray, Huberdeau, all those guys are big additions uh, for this Stanley Cup. And there we go. Finally. After eight long seasons, Atlanta Thrashers, Stanley Cup champions. I forget, when did Atlanta come to the league? I think it was like around 2000, so it's 2026 season, I honestly forget. About 26 years later, quarter of a century, finally get the first Stanley Cup with, like I said, what's got to be the most stacked team of all time. And we'll probably for sure lose a few guys this summer, but we won the Stanley Cup, and that's all that matters. And we still have... You know, tons of prospects still, so it feels good, guys. It feels good to finally get it. I was worried, like, every single round, the teams we matched up with were so, so good. I thought it's going to be tough to get through here, but somehow the boys found a way each and every time. Would have been cool to win it in Atlanta as well, but winning it in Vegas, like I said, should be a party. We'll take the cup back to Atlanta, so pretty awesome, I'd say. And right here, of course, just the handshake line finishing up. What I'm looking forward to, I think it's the next shot. Here we go. Wait. Why is Savoie... Oh, he's a Conn Smythe winner. I was like, I want Kane to go get the cup. So Savoie gets the Conn Smythe. That's pretty sick. It's almost always a goalie. Of course, you know, generational player. He really came into his own, like, this season as well as his playoffs. Before that, he was just kind of meh. This is what I was looking for. Vander Kane, the only remaining Thrasher alumni, wearing the Thrasher jersey with the C. Gonna go get that Stanley Cup. I am pumped to see that. We finally got it. That Drummond dude there, he's got some uh, he's got some sick facial hair with the stash and everything. Vegas fans, they're not too happy, but they gotta respect it. You know, an expansion team. And there we go, Vander Kane wearing the C Thrasher's jersey. Getting that Stanley Cup from Gary Bettman. Love to see it. Veteran, only one left, like we said. It kind of sucks. We're one year late. Wheeler Bufflin, they held out as long as they could. But there we go, this one's for them. And all the other Thrasher alumni. Kolvachuk, Heatley, all the boys. And there we go. Who's he gonna give it to first here? I think that's Nemestikov, to be honest. I'm not entirely sure. And it, yeah, it is Nemestikov. He gets it first. And next, you guys, we have New Hook lifting the cup. It was a very solid bomb six forward for us these past few years. And he's handing it off here to Wolstead, who obviously, big reason why we won this cup. I mean, 89 overall franchise goalie. He's going to get paid. We're probably going to have to trade away Spencer Knight, but uh, he was a big reason why. So that is awesome. Here we go. Stanley Cup pick. You got Kane there next to McDavid. Love to see it. All the boys there in the shot. Again, this is... Pretty crazy team. Lots of generic faces because a lot of creative players on this team. But still, Thrashers, Atlanta Thrashers, Stanley Cup champions. It's awesome. Doesn't matter when you win it. In fact, we won it. Bjork. What the hell? They gave Bjork. That's the Vegas guys were just so salty about us winning the cup. They gave Bjork the first start of the game. Even though both Dubois and McDavid had two goals. And we beat them 5-3 winning the cup. That's pretty funny. That's, that's a troll job for sure. But who cares? We're Stanley Cup champs. They can suck it. And the large results are in here, guys. Florida there picking first overall. I feel like they just recently picked first overall. Unless it was in a cup or bust I did. I'm getting confused. Good for them, I guess. They traded us Huberdeau. Now they're going first overall. And look at this. The projected first overall pick is a gem according to our scouts. 
really uh, glad we're paying them. And it looks like, again, only five meter elite guys at the top of the draft. So it seems like when you get really deep here, like 2026, the drafts aren't quite as good. Or maybe just a, you know, a couple bad back-to-back -back years. Patty Kane retires just under a point per game. That's got to suck. He probably wishes he could have got one more in that last one. Backstrom, Marshan, he was still really good. TJ Oshie, John Carlson, uh, David Perron there, Josh Bailey, Atkinson, Shankirk. So I don't see Evander Kane. I was wondering if maybe Kane would have uh, retired here after winning the Stanley Cup, but I don't think they can retire until they're 35, which is why I was saying I wanted to really win it this year and next, because I believe Kane's 34 right now, so we got it just in time. And Patty Kane becomes a scout. I would definitely hire Patty Kane to be a scout for us. So we'll take a look at the awards here. I think we got a good amount of AHL ones, the most important AHL one, the Stanley Cup. So Voila, of course. Con Smythe there. So let's actually take a look here at uh, the team's playoff stats. How did everyone do? Wallstrom, I didn't realize he was that good as well. 30 points, 103 shots. The dude was shooting like crazy. So only one less point than Savoie. He had more goals. So both those guys were heroes for us. McDavid, 28. That first line. Even the second line there. Perfetti Tolvin in his share. Played well. Dubois, Huberdeau. Lots of guys playing really well here. What were Wallstead's stats like? 0.914, 2.99. You would like a little bit better than that for the playoffs, I'm not going to lie. The league scoring is up, so I guess .914 isn't bad, but I've seen it before where a goalie puts up like a .93 and a 1.8 in the playoffs. I think it's a lot easier with less games to get, you know, better stats. So playoff tree here, we'll see what Vegas road was. We, of course, Ottawa in 7. Ottawa's our toughest series, that's kind of crazy, first round. Rangers 5, Flyers 6, Vegas 6. Vegas went 7 with the Coyotes, 7 with the Oilers, 7 with the Predators, and then 6 with us, so... They played a lot of playoff hockey there, trying to get their first Stanley Cup. And look at the awards next here. That looks awesome. Stanley Cup champions, Atlanta Thrashers. President's Trophy there, Buffalo Sabres. Would have been nice to win that as well. And then, of course, we got the Prince of Wales. So, player awards here. Pearson got the Art Ross. That guy, like, what? He had 60 goals, I think. And he also got the Hart Trophy. James Norris there went to Bristol Linen. Iguchi, Lady Bing. Probably had, like, zero penalty minutes. Ben there with the Calder. Savoie, Con Smythe. We know that. Demko with the Vesna. He also got the William Jennings. Hodgson was the Bill Masterton, Barkov with the Selkie, so it looks like it was O'Reilly's trophy, now it's Barkov's. Pearson also got Ted Lindsay, and of course he had the Maurice Richard. Look at the AHL awards next here, Hartford won the Calder Cup, and our AHL team was the regular season winner. And look at the bottom there guys, our AHL teams finished first place in the regular season the past 4-5 or five years, and have yet to win the Calder Cup, like how cursed are they, makes absolutely no sense. We won the Western Conference regular season the last 5 straight years. Also, our division, like, we're absolutely dominant in the regular season. I don't get it. If it was, like, soccer, uh, the way it works, like, in European soccer, we'd be a champion for five years. So, Di Pietro there m did finish most points. He was one back. Glad to see he was able to uh, win it there. MVP, though, goes to Wozniewski. Wow, that's a tough name. He went it back-to-back -back years. Novo Seltsev won the goals. Di Pietro was also a rookie. I didn't realize that. That's sick. Actually, yeah, because he would have been, I think, in juniors or unsigned last year. Vlasic, best D-man. Jake Allen's in the AHL. He got best goalie. This guy got the MVP of the playoffs. Di Pietro got best sportsmanship, though. Uh, Constantino got the community involvement. And then Riddick there, lowest goals again. So I would say that was a pretty good year for us. AHL team won the regular season. NHL team was the Stanley Cup. Atlanta finally gets it. Like I was saying, Evander Kane there. We wanted at least one alumni to get a Thrasher's Cup. So we were able to pull it off. Now, next summer, look at that. Our top three players all need new deals, along with our two goalies, Tolvanen, Dubois. Uh, it's going to be pretty crazy. Lindholm, even. So I'm thinking, though, guys, this will probably be the last Thrashers video. Good way to end it there with the Stanley Cup. I didn't want it, honestly, to take eight seasons, but at least we finally did get one. I'm thinking, though, I might actually sim, you know, the next couple of years of this on Twitch, just having some fun with it. But this will be the last video, like I said. Good way to go out. Appreciate all the support on this one. Next franchise mode series will be NHL 20. What it's going to be, I'm not exactly sure, but make sure you guys stay tuned for that. And as always, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this one. Again, thank you for the support on this series. If you did like it, leave a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet and you're all the way to the end, I don't know what you're doing, but make sure you hit that sub button. As always, guys, thank you for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.